Hi, and welcome to Access Chat. We're delighted to welcome back uh, a return guest. It's Nudiniz Dunja, and Nudiniz, you came on Access Chat probably a good couple of years ago now. You had uh, just started the process of um, of creating the first guide dogs association in, in Turkey, um, but uh, it's great to have you back. Uh, see you getting a lot of press and 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 uh, a lot of doing a lot of work. Uh, keep seeing posts about you on on social media and so on. But um, I'm sure our audience will be delighted to to hear what you've been doing. So can you just give us a bit of a a reintroduction to how you came to to start the association and um, end up with your beautiful black guide dog Kara, who you've been showing us just now and 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 what you've been up to in the intervening time since we last spoke thank you so much first of all you know um as you know i'm a lawyer and i have been working for this guy dog association uh, for five years almost five years we had a chat i think 2015 uh, december 28 so after that we had many things many experiences what we did, first of all, we did a lot of uh, to create the awareness for the blind and people in Turkey, because we don't have, we didn't have proper dog culture for the guide dog. We are the first guide dog association for the blind people. It was very new things from my country. First of all, we have to explain that. 2016, um, I introduced with Kara. Kara is an amazing guide dog, but you know we had to do many things for the public because um, Mrs. Maggie Moore. We found this association 2014. We met one of the events at the residential. Her husband was former resident Muslim in Turkey, and Maggie Maggie is blind like me. We introduced and we understood we had same disease and same eye conditions, and she was very comfortable with the guide dog star, star, star is really star. And I asked her, I really would like to get a guide dog. And she said, let's found the guide dog association. It was an amazing adventure for me. After Kara, everything changed because before Kara, I was talking about guide dog, what is guide dog, what is the history of guide dog, what will we do? Because we didn't have the regulation for that. Also, no, we don't have the special regulation, but we are part of the United Nations and it is a special right for the people with disability. 2016, November, I met with Kara in front of media, first documentary. I was so excited because it was new adventure and we start uh, training in Ankara, capital of Turkey. Then I came back to Istanbul to introduce my family, my business colleagues. And first of all, I would like to try Metrobus with Kara. And I went to Metrobus with my trainer. And I said to them, this is my guide dog. And they understood Kara, my guide dog is a blind. And I said, no, I'm a blind. First of all, we started with Metrobus that style, then ferry, train, and we flew first time, airplane, Turkish guide dog. She is the first, she's the first guide dog in Turkey. And in Turkey, people, they are very lovely, they would like to pet her, or they are scared. So we opened the door for public, making sure people have it good, and we opened the door for the public. So, so I, I think it's 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 worth noting that that um, dog ownership's not particularly um, common anyway in in um, in Turkish culture, right? And 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 therefore, um, and certainly not guide dog ownership, as you said, Kara's the the first guide dog in, in the country, so there isn't any kind of yeah yeah. So there's no kind of yeah, there's no psychological understanding of, of of what the dogs do or anything like that. So you've had to go and educate people. Yes, actually, it wasn't easy first of all because they thought the, the guide dog should be different because 
I'm short and lady and Kara is a little bit big dog. And if I try to get on natural, you now security first of all stop me and they ask, uh, are you blind? But uh, your dog is very big. I said, this is a guide dog. That's why it's big, you know? So, you know, I'm very comfortable now. Sometimes people doesn't understand guide dog, but if I explain everything's getting better, better. Yeah. I, 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 I have seen uh, all your, let's say, adventures on Instagram. You know where you go to different places, different events, and uh, uh, with your dog. Can you uh, uh, tell us uh, your experiences uh, uh, at the events? How people react when they see you with, with your dog, and what questions uh, you usually get from them when they see you just attending uh, these uh, social events where you somehow. I believe, seem to enjoy a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. As you know, I'm with the Summers of Commerce members, the Summers of Commerce member. I'm a very active person. I try to go all events. And, uh, you know, normally all events are very crowded. That's why, uh, first of all, they try to understand and they're asking the question, is it really good? Is it really helpful for you? And all the time I'm telling them to be independent, it's really good thing to go somewhere without someone to, sh to, uh, to go to the shopping or to go to the different places of, if you are, if you are bored to go, to go out without anyone with your guide dog, amazing things. You know, they try to understand one of the events last year, I participated and people didn't understand I was a blind and one of the men said to me, why you came with your dog to the event? I said, I'm a blind, that's why. And he was in shock, you know. It's good to give people the positive energy. And one of the documentary, uh, actually Sabanja Foundation is a big big foundation in Turkey and they, they select us change maker. And we were working on documentary and he said to me, could you go to the bookstore? I said, okay, but I cannot read the book. And he said, oh, I forgot because we were walking with him and he forgot I'm a blind with Kara. And nowadays for bank, Procedure for all public buildings. I'm very comfortable with Kara. That's great to hear, Deborah. I know you had a, a, a question or a comment. You're on mute, by the way. Thank you, Neil. Usually we get you. It's usually Neil, me. So. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Um, but welcome back to the program. We we loved having you on before, and we've been, as Antonio Neal has said, we've been watching your adventures. Um, but the one thing that I was curious about is that Turkey um, certainly has multiple religions, but they also mm -hmm. have a very large Muslim uh, population mm -hmm. in Turkey. And I know that there's some very interesting hi history between Muslims and dogs that First, way back, um, dogs were, you know, laborers and they were very involved in people's lives. And then they also were very helpful because they would eat garbage. And then as the year, I've, I've explored the history because I think it's fascinating. But it, it got to the point where saw a lot of uh, Muslims, they don't like dogs. They think they're unclean and they're dirty. But at the same time, there are some people that, uh, Muslims that keep dog, that have dogs because it's a status symbol. So I'm just curious how, has this had any impact on what you're doing? And, and the reason why I'm curious is because when I was in Singapore, uh, I was teaching and I was talking about guide dogs and they're like, no, 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 we don't do guide dogs here. Just because Singapore is so small, I think. But, and they also said that part, it was partially because of Muslims. And so I was just curious if any of these, you know, any of these issues, you know, have come up and how are people handling it? I, I was, I'm just curious about it. Thank you, 
for this question. Actually, Muslim religion accepts the dog. Culture doesn't do that. You know, last week we had a conference and we were discussing about, you know, in the religion book it's written, dog is not a bad thing. But they have a different culture, that's why, because we start to leave the small buildings that are made. But if you explain the dog helps you, it's not a problem. Sometimes they said, oh, I pray, I shouldn't touch, but I can understand you, you know. It's up to education. If people educate, they could understand easily. So media is very important. Almost two years I'm with Kara, and every day or every week we are on media. And, you know, it's very important to create awareness to people. Sometimes taxes are a problem, but mostly for public transportation, we are very comfortable. My country, majority, they are Muslim, but they accept guide dogs. And in Turkey now, there are four working guide dogs and three therapy dogs. So it is really good improvement because financially it's difficult. You have to explain to sponsor how it's helpful to people. And we should go to the places to show people how it's helpful. Great, great answer. And, and um, what I think I'm the opportunity here. Country. I'm proud of my country. You know, oh my gosh, Turkey's amazing. Turkey's amazing. Yeah. I agree with you. It's a beautiful country. But I think that I think that the reason why I wanted to bring that up was because the work that you're doing in Turkey is so powerful, but the it also can lead to a lot of other countries that are not accepting guide dogs. So that that was the point I wanted to make because there's there are other countries that are predominantly Muslims or and um, that are not accepting of the guide animals, so the guide dogs, and they're so helpful to people that are blind. So I was just, I wanted to just let the audience know that what you're doing is powerful for Turkey, but it's also powerful for a lot of the other countries too or that are watching what you're doing. So uh, bravo for all the work that you're doing. It's really exciting. And you had said right before air, and I was wondering if you would um, talk about this a little bit, um, but you had said before we got on air that you were talking about, you know, wearing high heels and makeup and how people were getting confused and assuming because you could do those things, you must not really be blind. So I was just wondering if you could tell that story because I, I thought it was interesting. Yeah, exactly. Our association actually main purpose to provide free charge guide dogs and they provide their services freely. Other things, our purpose show people how blind people can be successful if they have an opportunity. You know, they thought all the time blind people shouldn't wear, how to choose the color, how to wear, how to work. How to do that? We would like to show people. You know, uh, you can, you can, you can make up. You can wear. You can high heel. High heel is not a uh, good thing for the blind, actually. You know, for payment, for walking properly. But we would like to show people and make up can live their life. Because in Turkey, the problem is low perception. Perception is very low for the blind people. And 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 we know from following you on Instagram that you're always immaculately turned out, um, you know, very very well color coordinated. Um, last week we had um, be my eyes on um, on access chat. Are, are you familiar with the with be my eyes the application? Yes, yes, it's the amazing thing for blind people to ask, you know. Sometimes, uh, you know, I'm not very often using it to be my eyes, but, you know, sometimes I am connecting, you know, families or friends to ask my makeup because I always travel alone. So it is important to use technology and be my eyes is amazing. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's a fantastic thing. Um, and also, I was I was showing someone else the the color um, identifier in uh, Seeing AI, so yeah. you can you can use that and you can point at things and it will tell you what the color is and so on. It's really 
it's really it's really helpful but yeah we we know that you've got this off pat because we you know we see you on instagram you're always beautifully color coordinated i have i have full sight and uh, and and I'm incapable of coordinating my colors so uh, so people shouldn't that's make those assumptions that's why people always ask me is the dog blind or you are blind i try to force it um i'm a blind yes and it's very enjoyable, you know. People ask me, yeah. can you see or you cannot see? I said, absolutely, I cannot see. <laughs> yes. Um, so, so you mentioned that the, there are now um, three other guide dog users in, in Turkey that, the, that your foundation has helped um, train both the dogs and, and, and the users. But you also mentioned that you've, you've kind of diversified. So you've got therapy dogs as well now. So, so what took you into um, what led you to to start working with with dogs for therapy? Actually, last year we started to provide the guide dogs, more guide dogs, and some dogs failed. And you know, it was too difficult because we had very good promises made to international, made to the international and business council support us, and the dogs failed. And this year we had a. We had a trainer from UK, Ken Bryden, and he came to Turkey and we discussed what we could with the failed dogs because they are fully trained and you know final part they failed and they couldn't be the guide dog. So if they are not guide dog, they should have other disabilities, mental disability children, blind children. We have to help them for Heading communication. That's why we start therapy dogs. Mango, um, Kaimak, we have, uh, and from this, they are working for therapy in Turkey. Excellent. And, and, and what kind of um, role do they play now? So that, are, they, are they working with children? Yes, they're working with children. We have a puppy walker, um, dog walker families. They are volunteer families. They take care of the dog. And twice a week, they are going to the children, disabled children too. And they pet the dog children, they play the dog. And yeah, it's good for the communication. Fantastic. Um, you. Again, you mentioned, you know, uh, we know that you're a a lawyer, um, and that takes a tremendous amount. And usually, the, there's a tremendous amount of reading engaged with with being a lawyer, um, yeah. and and that's obviously something that Kara can't help you with. Um, yeah, yeah, actually, so, I, I so how how do you cope? Yeah, you have a you have the assistant helping you. Okay. Uh, no, I have a good story for that, you know. Okay, Last great. Month, I was at the airport and we found the checking services for the disabled people. And I checked in and then she asked me, do you need the assistant? I said, unfortunately, Kara cannot read. At the airport, we need all the time my system, but outside, on the street, I always use, if I am alone, blind care. It's very helpful to find a place find a street if I don't know. It's very helpful. Yeah. So that's uh, the Blind Square app, and I think you can find some uh, write-ups on that on AppleViz, um, yeah. if people yeah, are looking for it. It's, it's a yeah. very good app for the blind people. Also, we have many apps, NFT Reader, you know, different kind of second reader we use. It's very helpful. Technology is improving and helping blind people. I have two assistants, iPhone and Kara. Deborah, I know you had another question. Well, I was just wondering what's next for your organization? I mean, you, you've achieved a lot and just, I, I think a lot of our audience understands that, you know, training 
a guide dog. It takes mm -hmm. many, many years. And as you say, sometimes, you know, the guide dogs fail along the way. And so it's nice that you can do the therapy, but you, you see, so you've actually accomplished a lot having four owners with guide dogs throughout Turkey, but what's next? Where, where what do you hope to achieve? Cause I know you're not done. You are definitely going to mm -hmm. change the world. So what's the next thing? And I also think it's a good point that, I like how you're using technology with the dogs. You're utilizing everything to have a fully independent life, which is what people want to do. So that's exciting. What is next? What is next? Actually, we would like to provide more guide dogs for the blind people because there are, there are a lot of people, uh, they are waiting guide dogs. And every day, many, many blind call and they would like to be more independent. Absolutely right things. Very helpful for the blind people. But, you know, they, they always, they always want to be more independent, safely, because guide dog is not only your assistant, not only for walking. They are very good friends, but we try to explain to them they have a responsibility for the guide dog. It's not only dog. You have to look after your dog. Dog look after you. This is a team word. And yeah, we would like to be more guide dog because. You know, so you have a waiting list now. So you have a waiting we, list. Yeah. Yes, we have a very, very uh, long waiting list for that. Right. Sometimes it's too, too difficult to explain that because financially you need a support. You know, you need a trainer. We need a trainer, more and more trainers. We always get support from UK, Group Guide Dog Federation. But in Turkey, there are 756,000 registered blind people and young generation more per scientist. So we need more help. Also, we would like to, we would like to organize more and more therapy dogs for old people and the other disabilities. But main purpose for blind people. So, so I've got a question. Um, and that is, uh, how much does it cost to, um, you know, to to get from the point of taking the puppy to having a trained guide dog and 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 uh, user? Because obviously there's a cost to training the user too. Uh, Actually, approximately two years cost sixty thousand Turkish liras. It means approximately ten thousand euros. Ten thousand euros. Yeah, okay. So that's not an insignificant amount of money. So um, I know you're getting support, as as you mentioned, from from the the guide dogs association and and, and from from the UK. Uh, what other things can you know? How can other people engage? And you know, do you have a just giving page, or is there a you know? Can people donate? They can donate from our bank account. We have the SMS things, and we all the time organize once a year fundraising events. Yeah, it's coming. Uh, <laughs> like uh -huh, brilliant. Okay, so like a big f fundraising ball or something. Um, yeah, fundraising ball. Merch International organize. They're, they're, they are full sponsor for the fundraising events. Um, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, but there needs to, you know, as you said, if there's 750,000 uh, people out there that are registered blind in Turkey, that's a, a lot of, you know, a, a lot of money that you need to, to raise to help people uh, be more independent. Do you think that at some point? Do you think that at some point that, that um, attitudes within the the government might might change towards funding of this kind of stuff, and that you might be able to get support from from the administration to to train people and to train yeah. to train guide Actually, dogs? We have just started that kind of projects. First of all, we organized Turkish standard institutes the standards because. Before, we didn't have a guide dog. That's why we don't have any standards. And we prepare standards for the guide dog. What is a guide dog? What is 
what we work as families criteria, what is the health criteria. So after that, we will start with the minister policies, you know, train more people. It's a long procedure for the corporation. First of all, we start, we are NGO. NGOs responsible to, to show people how it's working. So it's on time. We, we applied to Australian Embassy Project, we won that. Second trainer we sent to UK with that. And second, we were change makers. And last year, September, we had a reward from International Shopping Council, Zola Shopping Center, applied the project with us for accessible to the shopping malls. And that was the good things. And we would like to work with the family and labor minister for that work. But it's, it's, it's taking time. Yeah, no, I, these things always do. Um, but it's, it sounds like you are making progress and, and you know, I'm sure we'll come back and revisit again, hopefully, and, and you'll have, you know, 400 dogs and, and, a, yeah. and, a, it's a, and a, a bunch of different people. So, um, I, 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 yeah, no, I, no, I sincerely hope and I'm, I'm confident that you've got this, you know, you've got this energy and, and, and the passion to, to deliver this. Um, yeah, we would like to work with a technology company because it's important to work with them, you know, or big, big companies, you know, international companies in Turkey to support that work. Yeah. No, and um, so, yes, it's a combination. So you've got the combination of, of the, you know, the trained animal and, and then you're using things like uh, Blind Square, Be My Eyes, other applications. And you say that, that the iPhone is your second assistant. How are you yeah. using your, your iPhone in, in your daily work? Are you using that not just for navigating around, but also for, for sort of a lot of your office tasks as well? Yes, absolutely. For office, a lot of tasks and writing a message, email, you know, for social media, everything. iPhone is my, my life, you know. When I wake up, first of all, I'm checking my phone. What time is it? And um, what is the WhatsApp message? Or Twitter, you know, I always follow Twitter, and, you know, the news from phone, everything. To read newspaper, to listen radios, everything. Yeah. To, to understand colors, to check the money, everything. Not on the navigation. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, I, I, Go on, I think you achieved something, you know, some, something very interesting in a short period of time in terms of uh, change and awareness. Uh, uh, so, I, so I have to give you, you know, uh, congratulations for that because it's not easy to work in, in this space. So, well done. <laughs> Thank you so much. But it was very enjoyable, you know. Sometimes I was I was a little bit worried about the public if they didn't accept me for you know mini bars for buses metro now it's it's amazing you know people knows Kara people knows me and the other key guide dog user absolutely there there is a, some some issue but not too much we are we are still young initiative you know. This is important for blindness. This is important for animal lovers. If you train the dog, how it's helpful for humans health. Amazing. Change their life. We would like to show also that. Animals yeah, no, are I, our best friends, you know, if you train them. I think, yeah, I love dogs. Um, I think guide yeah. dogs are just amazing anyway, uh, as well. Um, one last thing before we close, and, and you talked previously when we when we talked a few years ago about how um, you know th there were regulations on accessibility, but but they were sort of followed without thought. So you would have um, you know the textured paving or whatever, but it would be laid out in such a way that it didn't 
work for for users is the greater awareness that you've seen over the last few years actually resulting in a in a better and more inclusive environment in general do you think that pe that, that things are improving yes there are a lot of improvement in turkey you know i would like to tell that it's really good you know for technology for accessibility you know you can see the difference for universities day by day it's changing getting better i can tell that that that's that's really that's really pleasing to know so um I, it just remains for me to thank all of our our supporters barclays access microlink and, and my clear text for helping us uh sustain access chat over the years and we're going to keep on interviewing and revisiting these amazing projects and people like you so thank you very much Nadine. It's, it's been a real pleasure thank again for interviewing you thank you very much Deborah. thank you very much Andrea. thank you Yes, thank you so much.